I have been thinking about this video ever since there was a conversation in the comments about the use of the word normal. And I've also been thinking about it since Sadie said that her favorite thing about herself is she's weird. And I feel really feel like that ties into the way that I think of the word normal and why I probably use it. And I know that particularly the word normal seems to offend people and I've been trying to find actually other words to replace the word normal. But I want to start out with an explanation first for why I don't think it has up until now really bothered me or why I didn't think of using normal as in like, oh, this seemed to be missing a normal milestone as a bad thing. And that's what we're talking about today. So this goes way, way back. And I would say that growing up, by the time I hit like Sadie's age, middle school, I had definitely begun to internalize this idea that I was a little bit weird, or maybe more than a little bit weird. The things that I liked were weird, some of them were too young for what I should be interested in, like I still liked dolls, I thought Power Rangers were really cool when that was supposed to be a preschooler thing, and I really liked it still. Um, it's just everybody else was talking about boys and I was kind of starting to be interested in boys, but I was also interested in Barbies and stuff that was supposed to be for kids that was, were a lot younger than me. And I had the option at that point of either feeling bad about myself or embracing the weirdness. And obviously, <laughs> maybe not obviously, but I chose over the years it came to embrace that weirdness. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Sometimes I tried to hide it more and tried to act a certain way, tried to fit in harder, and usually I was less happy when I did that. Sometimes, sometimes I was just myself, and usually when I let myself be myself, I'm quieter. <laughs> I'm quieter outwardly at least, I talk less, I probably appear to be less friendly. Um, I make less of an effort to seem social to people that I don't know well. That's totally out the window now, probably, that we have so much going on with therapy and school, and then, I mean, that requires a certain level of outgoingness that always has to be there. But when I was younger, I definitely internalized this idea that weird was cool, and that anyone who didn't think so was not really worth it that if they didn't think weird was a good thing, that was their loss, and they weren't really worth my time. Which brings me to my outlook on normal. Because I had so embraced the concept of weird as a good thing throughout my entire life, when I use normal, usually it just means like the average, the norm, the average age at which a child walks. Most kids walk by the time they're 18 months old. So when James, or most kids can sit up before a certain age. When James couldn't sit up by the time he was 10 months old, we knew that wasn't normal. And I don't mean that like in a bad way or anything. I just knew we needed to get him into early intervention. It didn't mean that there was... That's usually how I think of normal and use normal. I don't really think of normal as like, a goal. It's not a goal that I have for my kids. It's not something that I want to be pushing them towards. I want them to be the people that they are. And so if I use the word normal, that's usually how I'm using it here. Not as like some goal for... because I know there's a wide range of normal. I'm just usually using it like average, but a lot of times normal just kind of works better. And honestly, I don't use either one to label other people. I do use neurotypical. When I'm talking about people, I use neurotypical or whatever identifier a person prefers because weird seems to be the sort of thing that's always better when you're calling it yourself. <laughs> Not really when you're calling someone else. Makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, that is how it's used around here and I can tell that is definitely how Sadie uses it too, because I've heard her say things in her little preteen way, like, what's so great about being normal? I feel that the lesson has been passed on inadvertently. Um, I remember when I was vlogging, before we ended up deciding we were sending our kids to school, 
when I was blogging, this was way before I vlogged, when our kids were really little and we talked about homeschooling and someone said that if we homeschooled, homeschooled kids are so awkward and they went on and on about how socially awkward all the homeschooled kids are that they, they knew. And I remember at the time thinking, like, I'm their mother. <laughs> I went to public school my whole life. I am so socially awkward. And I think that there's probably a very good chance that my kids are going to be socially awkward just because I'm their mother. Not totally true. I have kids that are socially awkward. I have kids that are like talking to every single person we go by that I'm like, that's a stranger, 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 stranger. <laughs> Please stop complimenting every stranger you walk by. Because I have one kid who literally, I mean, I'm not telling him not to compliment people, but I'm, I am constantly it's a constant battle to ask him not to talk to every stranger because every person we walk by is the best friend that he has like I like your hair I like your dress those are great shoes I mean it's it is both amazing and also the concept of stranger danger has been difficult to embed so that concept of social awkwardness, I think, is much more innate than a lot of people realize. <laughs> At least in my experience, because... These five kids, they've all grown up together, they've all had virtually the same experience, they have had so much social interaction, and... The amount of social awkwardness is widely different from person to person. <laughs> Now I need to go see what's going on out there because it sounds like there's something going on with the heat events that I need to take care of. And that is it for today. If you liked this video, we'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in all things autism, we'd love it if you'd hit subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.